welcome back. I hope y'all had a great Christmas break. Happy New Year. Today we are going to jump right in to a very fun thing, pie crust. You can have savory pie crust for chicken pot pies and things. You can have sweeter pie crust uh, for, you know, apple pie, lemon meringue, all the good pies, right? Um, I am a strong proponent of not compromising. I want to make really, really good food for my family. I don't think we should have to give up anything. If I want a pie and I want a good pie crust, I don't want to have, well, some things I'll make with white flour and some things. I'm, I'm all in. I want to do the healthiest thing I can for my family. One, because I know that if I make like white flour, store-bought flour things for my kids, they're going to have stomach aches later and it's just, it's not healthy. With this, you get your yummy pie of choice and you know that all of the goodness of the wheat berries that God gave us is in the pie crust. So yes, you might have a sweet treat, whether you use white flour or brown, white, sorry, gosh, not white flour, whether you use white sugar or brown sugar or sucanut and uh, honey granules, the, the crust is going to be full of such good nutrients. Uh, you have all the good fiber and minerals and vitamins and stuff, so you can feel better about the choices you, know, you make of what you feed your family. And I don't think that really good healthy food should be boring, bland, tasteless food. I, I think these are really yummy pie crusts. And so much so, we make savory pies with them, we've made sweet pies with them. We also roll out the pie dough and get our cookie cutters out and we make uh, yummy pie crust cookies that we brush on butter and put something on top sugar or uh, well it's for us sucanut and cinnamon or something you know and we we gobble those down uh, it's it's a big favorite here if we want a quick cookie we tend to do that but um, so there is some caveats here you don't have to compromise on on health benefits you don't have to compromise on you know substituting in white flour. We can get a good flaky pie crust. We just need to understand. I even have notes here today because I've, I've tried to delve in because sometimes knowing how to do it, you also need to know why you need to do it this way. So if you do, like I can make a white flour, store-bought flour pie crust any day, hundreds, not a problem. They're supple. You can roll it up on your pan and roll it in your thing. They're easy. So when you use wheat berries, you are using the whole berry. So it's got all the fiber, it's got all the minerals, it's got the oil, it's got the vitamin, you know. It's, it's always going to be denser. The pie crust will not be as supple because it's fuller of, of all those other things that I just mentioned. Um, it is not as easy to work with as a regular pie crust. You're not going to get the same exact thing. But why is it different? Because it's full of all the good nutrients. Because you're making a healthier and a better choice. So when things feel different, if you're used to making pie crust, when things start to feel different and you get frustrated, you're doing this for, for a good reason, you are using the best ingredients you can and you're gonna make an amazing pie crust. There is a lot of room for error in this. And pat yourself on the back because if you make a regular pie crust, Good on you. That's always better than store-bought. If you make a freshly milled flour pie crust, set yourself up five more levels of difficulty because we are starting way up here. <laughs> we are going to get through this and we're going to do it and it's going to be great and it's going to taste so good and you're going to be so proud of yourself. But we are starting at a, at a higher difficulty level here. But I wanted to show you, I pre-baked these um, last night. I'm going to make chicken pot pie tonight. So one of them I'm not going to touch. One of them I'm going to kind of take apart so you can see. I want you to see now we can get a good buttery flaky pie crust. Uh, there is a fly flying around, sorry. Um, and it's going to be delicious. We can do this. There are things we're going to work through together. We're going to understand why we're doing it a little bit differently. Whenever you use freshly milled flour, you're going to use different ratios of, of water and uh, it's, it's about the same amount of butter. Flour is going to be a little bit different. So I'm going to show you every step of the way what things are supposed to look like. Um, not only just the measurements, but what it looks like so you can see. Because that's I get so frustrated if I don't understand. And it sounds 
like mine's coming out different than the person I'm watching, you know. So we're gonna we're gonna do this together. We can do it and we can make amazing pie crust. There are two big rules to follow here. I mean it's the same as you know biscuits and regular pie crust. You don't want to work the dough too much. For us, you really don't want to work the dough too much. We are we are working even more. We want to keep everything as cold as possible because we want those butter chunks to be seen in the dough. We want it to not dissolve into the flour. We really, really need that butter to work for us because you get the flakiness of the pie crust in um, the, the water content in the butter. When it cooks, it evaporates and it lifts up the dough. It lifts the layers up, kind of it makes layers. That's where you get the flakiness from. We need our butter to work harder for us than the regular pie crust. So we really want to see those big chunks of butter. So we are going to keep putting it back in the fridge to keep it cold so that butter doesn't dissolve in there. And we're not going to work this overly work it. We want to keep resting it because we do not want to build gluten. And that's something we can do if we overwork this. So keep it cold. Keep your hands off it as much as you can. <laughs> and we're going to keep putting it back into the freezer, you know, or uh, fridge. So we're going to walk our way through this. You can do this. We've got it. I'm excited. This is really, really good. So I will have the camera come up close here so you can see this pie crust um, up close and personal here. Okay, I completely baked this last night. Usually if you par bake it, you don't want to finish baking it. This is a complete bake. Um, so you can tell it's a good crust if you can pick it up out of here. But look at this. I could have even let it cook a couple more minutes. But you can see the flakiness in here. You can see this is not perfect, as in if you use the, the white flour. I had to fill in a couple spots here. This is obviously darker. It's not a like a white pie crust because we used the, the real flour, the good flour, right? I'm going to break this up a little bit, which I'm so sad to do, but I want you to see you can have the good buttery layers. You can have a delicious light and fluffy pie crust. It will never be as light and fluffy as, as white flour. That's just by nature. But this is so full of life and so full of goodness. Um, I just, I'm so excited because it's a great pie crust. Whether you use the sugar, the sucanat, or honey granules or not um, for savory versus uh, sweet pie, it's just, it's really good. It's good and flaky. It tastes delicious. I had some extra last night and we made little cookies and we ate them and everybody really enjoyed them. So this is a good pie crust and we're going to make it and you can do it. For this recipe, uh, and omit the sugar, or I'm using sucanut. Actually, I would use honey granules, but I'm out of them right now. <laughs> but if you're use, making a savory pie crust, uh, don't put the sweetener of your choice in there. But we need three cups of flour, and I use soft white wheat because we don't need the, the gluten properties of the hard white hard red. Um, we're using a tablespoon of sweetener if you're making a sweet pie, uh, a teaspoon of salt, two sticks of unsalted butter, and then just while you're doing everything else, we're going to use six to eight tablespoons of ice water. So just have this water chilling right here while you're um, getting everything else together. As soon as we combine everything, we're going to put it in the fridge for half an hour. So. This is where I might lose some of you. <laughs> the flour that we have has all the bran and all the, you know, all the wheat germ and everything in it, all the fiber. We need, for a good flaky pie crust, we need to sift it. We are not throwing any part of it away. If you have a mock mill, what we're going to do is take everything we've sifted out and put it through the mock mill a few more times. If you don't have a mock mill, you can put it in a blender and we're just going to keep sifting. We're going to keep blending and then sip, sip and blend and sip, sip until we have three cups of sifted flour. You don't have to do this, but your pie crust will be very dense and it will not be as supple as you would like. 
it will taste amazing. It's gonna be a delicious pie crust. But this is a trick we need to do for our level five difficulty here to really uh, elevate everything to get it to be a, a supple pie crust. Uh, nice, as light as we can get it and flaky. So if you can just put on a TV show or a podcast or something and just sift. And when I say sift, I have a big sifter and I have a little sifter. Now one day I'm going to upgrade my little sifter. <laughs> this is very um, wide holes in the mesh. It's very wide. Uh, the wires are wider apart. This is very um, close together, kind of a finer strainer. I'm not using this. I'm going to go through. I want a much bigger one of these one day, so it'll be a lot faster. But I am going through, and I'm going to sift three cups of flour out, plus a little bit more, because we're going to want to, as we roll it out, we're going to flour the surface also. So if you're taking the time to sift now, just sift three and a half cups of flour, somewhere around that. Because it's going to take a while, but stick with me, and it's going to be worth it, okay? And if you happen to have just a day where you can make pie crust, these freeze beautifully. So if you want to make a few, like, you know, the pucks of pie dough and just stick it in the freezer, if you have time to do it one day, just do it, and you can you can keep it. I've, I've had one six months old, and it's really, really good. So um, obviously put in saran wrap and in a, you know, freezer bag or whatever, but... Um, this step is time consuming, but it is so worth it and makes everything uh, so much better. <laughs> so start sifting. Don't throw any of it away because that's all the good, healthy, good nutrients in there. We're going to just keep milling it. If you have like a mock mill where you can um, keep putting stuff back in and milling it and it, it makes it finer and finer. If not, get a blender, uh, a coffee grinder, uh, clean it out really well. You don't want coffee flavored pie crust. Or maybe you do, that'd be really good. But um, we're gonna sift. This is gonna take forever. All right, I have painstakingly <laughs> sifted three cups of flour, and as I sifted out the flour, I was left with, you know, the bran, the germ, all that, and I collected it into here, and then I just kept milling it through my mill and sifting and milling it and sifting until I had just a little bit left. So this is the remains of the stuff I just didn't feel like. Um, finishing at this point. Um, so you see the difference in size of the flour. So your determination to keep blending it or remilling it. Uh, now in the Wonder Mill, I don't think it'll, I don't think you can uh, remill something through it. It has to be berries. The mock mill, you can take um, flour and remill it. I wouldn't do like fine flour and remill it, but the germ and the bran that's thicker, you can remill that. So I, I continually did that till I have three cups of flour. You see how nice and light and fluffy this is. This is what you want. Good, fluffy, light flour. Milled and milled and milled. So then uh, what I'm gonna do savory pie crust, or excuse me, sweet pie crust. So I'm using sucanat. I usually use honey granules, but I'm out of them right now. I want to show you, this is sucanat granules as they come. They're quite large. Well, we just went to all the effort of milling and fluffing and sifting the flour. I'm not gonna put particles this large in there. So I went ahead and just blended my sucanat. So I'm gonna put a tablespoon of sucanat into my flour. Then we need a, a teaspoon of salt. And these are larger granules, but they seem to work out okay. It's just a teaspoon. And I meant to also mention, whenever you mill wheat berries, you create the, the milling of the steel mill heads in the Wonder Mill or the stone mill heads, the friction causes heat 
everything we do with pie crust needs to be cold. So um, the sifting helps cool it down, get some air on it, because we don't want to use warm flour. Okay, so we're just going to mix these together. Okay, next. I am not worried about cutting these into teeny tiny little chunks. We want butter. This is unsalted butter because I like to control what I'm eating. And if you buy salted butter, it's whatever salt they're using. So I like to use Redmond's. Also, I like to control the salt amount. So this way I know exactly how much salt is there. We are just rough cutting this straight down the middle. And then just, you know, chunk, chunk, chunk. Remember, we don't want this to melt in, to seep in, to blend into the flour too terribly much. We want to see chunks of butter in what we're doing. We want to touch this as little as possible. So cutting your butter, pre-cutting into this size helps you touch it as little as possible, get it incorporated, but not so much that you're like really working it in and then it melts away and we don't have the good flakes. And don't yell at me, nothing's precise, I know that. Okay, we don't need this anymore. You can do this in a food processor, but it's gonna incorporate too much you're not gonna have the good butter chunk showing unless you're standing right there and on top of it. And when you see what it looks like when I'm done, if you can get it that way with your processor, great. I like to do it by hand because everything, I can control everything. You can hear our guineas outside. It's fascinating watching butter chunks. I'm trying to do it as fast as I can so I don't heat up the butter. <laughs> The butter coat the butter with the flour if you feel like your room is hot if it's summertime when you're doing this and your butter's been out you can put this in the fridge for a minute what we want to do is make sure everything's coated with butter or sorry all the butter's coated with flour we're just gonna squeeze a little bit and then coat with flour squeeze a little bit coat with flour Simple process, squeeze coat. If things start to get too hot, you feel like it's melting, stick it back in the fridge. Rinse your hands with cold water. Start again. Our main priority, cold, 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 and don't work too much. Should have taken my rings off. Just keep searching out the bigger chunks to work them down to small little pea sized bits. My poor husband is standing up high recording. This is entertainment, isn't it?
as you fluff, you get to see the big chunks that still need to be broken up. Okay, you can see it's starting to look sandy, which is good. That's all the little chunks of butter, but we still want um, some bigger chunks in there. Not as big as original, but as we roll the pie crust out, we want to see butter, 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 butter in there. We don't want it to be all mixed in. As this melts and evaporates, the water and it evaporates, it's going to create those fluffy layers there. So I'm going to call it pretty soon and call this good. Again, if it's summertime, if you have real hot hands, uh, if it's warmer in your house and you feel at this point, um, you know, things are too warm, then just pop it in the, the fridge uh, for five, ten minutes. I wouldn't make pie crust if you're on a time crunch. <laughs> If you know you're having Christmas party, Easter party, Thanksgiving, whatever, and you need to make pie, do it. Do the crust at least beforehand so you're not struggling to get it in on time because you need to be able to work with the elements in your house. Okay, you're going to say I'm crazy because there's too many butter chunks, but I promise you this is going to give us a leg up in our... Uh, butter working for us. Okay, so I'm going to add, usually with a pie crust you're doing four to six. Here I'm doing at least six because of how uh, dense our flour is it's going to soak up that water. So I'm going to put four in without even thinking about it of ice cold water. Don't get the ice in there. That was four, right? Okay, so we're going to move it around. I am not squeezing. I am literally just going underneath, scooping over, underneath, scooping over. I'm just trying to mix everything in. I'm going to do two more. Five, six. You can see some, some are starting to clump together. That's good. So the big clumps are clumping together and we still have sandy dry bits over here. So I'm going to do one more tablespoon. So this is seven. Just like a regular pie dough, when you squeeze it and it sticks together, then you know you're good and you can stop. I know if I started squeezing it now, there'd still be some sandy bits underneath here. So I'm going to probably add another one, so that'll be eight tablespoons of ice cold water. But I'm trying to really, without squeezing the butter, I'm trying to just get everything to mix in. just takes patience and you might think I don't understand why and I can't really explain why I just know that I've done this a bit I've done so much research on this and like trial and error tests and errors this is what works for the end result okay so now I'm gonna squeeze I'm going to do one more tablespoon, so this will be nine. Put 
push down without trying to ruin the integrity of the butter, which sounds ridiculous. There's even a little bit more. Ten. I don't want my fingers to heat it up too much. See, you can still see the flour, or excuse me, the butter. That's what we want, those good big chunks of butter. It's still even a little bit sandier than I'd like, but I might even just So, tell me what measurement that was, I don't know. Okay, so we need to get some saran wrap. We're gonna cut this in two, because it's gonna make two pie crusts. I would rather take more time and add little flicks of water on here than mix too hard and just ruin all that butter in there, like get it too integrated to the flour. Okay. Okay, so we're gonna just wrap these up in saran wrap, kind of make it into a little puck because you're going to want to roll it out and it's easier to roll out if it already starts as a circle. And again, because I just really believe in seeing what it should look like. Butter, 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 butter. Okay. It took 10 tablespoons of water and some flicks of water, right? But this is what we want it to look like. So we're going to wrap it in saran wrap and put it in the fridge for at least a half an hour. You could leave it in there all day and come back to it tomorrow. It doesn't matter as long as it's a minimum of a half an hour. I'm putting one pie crust out because I want to keep pie dough. I want to keep the other one in the fridge while we work this. I don't want that one to heat up. But you should pull it out five minutes or so before you want to roll it out. Um, because if you get it straight out of the fridge and it's real cold, and you go to roll, the edges are gonna crack real bad, which is fine. Once it warms up, you can kind of put them together. But if you wanna save yourself that step, then just let it kind of warm a little bit up to room temperature, warm relative speaking. Some things you're gonna need, if you're gonna do a pie, uh, you know, if you're not doing like cookies, you want whatever pie plate you're using, you want some sort of pie weight. You can use just tin foil if you don't have pie weights or beans. Um, or I guess you could use rice also. Uh, so what I've done is just, I put tin foil in, kind of melded it into a bowl. And then, uh, like last night, I made both of those pies that I already showed you. So I have pie weights. You can find these at Target and Walmart and Amazon. Um, also, I only had that many pie weights, so I've got just pinto beans, and you can put them in a bag and use them over and over and over. But so get a um, tin foil inside your pie plate, so you have it kind of about the size you're going to need with the beans in it. Usually, I would have the beans separate, so I didn't have to like be so careful lifting it. But I already made them last night, so I'm a little lazy to put them in a bag and put them back. So, okay. So you also need either a Silpat mat or uh, 
two uh, of these kind of mats that you can put on top of each other or parchment paper. Some way or another, you need two uh, things, uh, two barriers, <laughs> if you will. You also need other flour, the, the extra flour you sipped in and, and kept milling or blending or whatever, uh, because whatever is going to touch your pie crust needs to have flour on it. Not a ton of flour. We don't want to keep add flour, 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 because then it's going to get really thick, okay? We just want enough because any bit of that butter that touches a surface, the butter is going to stick to that. And if you try and turn it over, when you try and put it out, the butter is going to stick to the mat and everything else is going to go down. And, and you obviously want it all together. So we're just going to lightly flour this side. Put the, the pie dough here. We're going to flour the top of the pie dough. Now, I love this mat. It's called the Dough Easy This Is How We Roll Mat. It's got two kind of guides that'll show you how thick you want it. And then I'm going to put the dough down, put this on top, and just roll with flour on top. And this will guide me as to how thick I want the, the pie crust. If you like a thinner pie crust, go for it. If you want a thicker pie crust, go for it. This is kind of my guide. So I flour this. <clears throat> And we thought ahead to squish this down so it's not like a ball because if you start to try and roll a ball out in the middle it, it makes it a little bit more difficult and you end up mixing things a bit more but if you can see and my husband's going to close up uh the, the we can still see the butter nice and mixed in there okay you can see the butter nice in there well we like to see the butter this is Again, this is not going to be as supple and as easy to roll out and as easy to pick up or roll onto your rolling pin, um, but we're going to get as close as we can. <laughs> so we have flour down here, flouring the top a bit. For me, I'm going to roll the other half of my mat over. If you have parchment paper, whatever, we just want something top and bottom, and we're just going to start to push down and roll out. And we're gonna give it a few rolls, then we're gonna look at it, and I'll show you some things that tend to pop up. And you don't need to preheat your oven yet, because as soon as we get this into the pie plate, we're gonna cool it again. So it goes into the oven nice and cold. As much as you can get a circle out of this, super, but it really doesn't matter too much. Okay, so we're gonna flour again. And what's easy, if you use parchment paper or something, you wanna make sure you're flouring both sides. We're just going to keep rolling. Here's my pie plate. I never can get a perfect circle ever. So I'm going to do a little maintenance right here. Just kind of squish it together. All right. I'm going to make sure, oh gee, see I get quick and I end up doing something I shouldn't. Patience. Okay, I have a bit too much flour here for my taste, but it's going to be okay. 
Okay, so all I'm gonna do is just kind of, if I had regular pie crust, you could roll it up and roll it out. This doesn't do that. It'll start to break apart. So we're gonna be quick. If you have parchment paper, whatever, put your pie pan as close as you can, and we're gonna hold it. We know it's gonna move because we've already flipped it over and floured both sides. Make sure that you do that so it'll come out easy and you don't end up tearing it in here. Everything's fixable. Let's just save ourselves steps if we can. Now, fight the urge to push down. We need to lift up and push. And it's not gonna be perfect and it's gonna be okay. We're gonna fix it as we go. Lifting up, not just pushing in because your fingers will go straight through it. It does not stretch like regular pie dough. So we push in, push down, lift and push down. Okay, and you see it is cracked here, not a problem, but I want you to see, you still see the butter. And that's what we want. That's going to give us some good flakiness. Now, there's lots of things you can do to the top. So we're going to, let's see, just take off any extra. Okay, we're going to make sure this crack is nice and sealed. I'm going to push inward so it's off the pie plate and tuck behind. That's all I need to do first. We're going to push in, tuck behind. Push in, tuck behind. We'll make it pretty in a minute. Push in, tuck behind. Any any bits that are going to like over overlap each other. We'll take off, push in, tuck behind. Push in, well, that's a little bit. Tuck behind. We have extra, so if some part's a little bit thinner, we can fix it. You can make a really pretty one. All right, so mostly it all looks smooth and nice. We are doing great right now. Any tears you get, you can pinch together. Just, just pinch it together and try and make it look as smooth as possible. This dough is forgiving. If you sift it and work real hard beforehand, it makes it a lot nicer now. If you decided you didn't wanna sift it this is going to be a lot stiffer. This is going to be uh, less easy to work with. And that's okay. It's going to taste good. So if you needed to throw together a pie crust quick and you didn't sift anything, it's going to taste great. It's just not going to be as easy to work with. Now, you can do whatever kind of you know design you like. You want to squeeze and pinch, squeeze and pinch, squeeze and pinch, squeeze and pinch. Those are pretty. You can do your side fingers like this, so you have like a fun, pretty design. We can take the time right now, because we're not really touching a lot of it. Um, we don't have to worry about the butter melting too much. If it melts here, it's not going to be as big of a deal. But we're going to put this into the fridge before we bake it. So all I'm doing is putting two fingers in and squeezing towards my fingers towards each other to make a nice little indentation and ridge. And I'm trying to pick it up so it's not like on top so it'll stick to the top of the pie plate. But again, if you like the, this, this look better, 
Um, there's a thousand different ways to decorate your pie. You do whatever you like. These are just a couple of little ideas. I'm doing kind of half and half. See, mine's a little bit thin right here, so I'm just going to add a bit. I'm just trying to, in the end, pull it off the side so it's not going to like bake over the edge. I'm doing a terrible job today. <laughs> So I've done half and half here. Okay, so whatever you think looks better for you. This is not perfect. I'm a little bit embarrassed of my handiwork right now, but. Okay, so big thing is all of my seams I'm trying to stick together. I don't want, uh, you can have stuff coming over the edge. That's fine. It'll tend to brown a bit quicker. So if you have, they have little circular, um, metal guards you can put on the, the edge of the pie so it won't burn as much if you do it over the edge. I'm going to do a like open face thing so it's to me this works just fine. Okay so the next step once you're satisfied with how your pie crust looks your pie dough you're just going to poke through so we don't it helps alleviate the bubbling and we're also doing pie weights but this also helps anything we can do to help ourselves here. We've chilled the pie crust. It's nice and cold, the butter's solid, so it's gonna melt beautifully and cause that steam to make the fluffy flaky. Okay, there's a few things you can do. Like I said before, I think I kind of muddled my words. If you just need to fill it and bake it, you can do that and, and follow the rules of your pie that you're, you're making. Uh, if you want to par bake or partial bake, this is where we're going to put the tin foil with the weights, whatever you're doing. Now, because it's nice and cold, you don't have to worry about the tin foil messing up your folds. If it was more room temperature, you'd have to worry about all the design work you did getting squished by the tinfoil. We just kind of want to shake it down so it's on the bottom of the, the pie crust here so that the pie crust doesn't come up, you know. Uh, this is going to keep it weighted down. We are going to put this in a preheated oven for 425, uh, at 425, <laughs> um, and we're going to bake it for 15 minutes with this in and if you only want to partial bake it pull it out pull pull the pie weights out of it put it back in for two three more minutes you know that should be good if you want to fully bake it you could do 10 to 15 minutes and i know five minutes in an oven is a lot so you want to keep an eye on it it's your temperature it's how your oven holds temperature it's how hot your kitchen is what you're looking for is the golden uh, browning of the edges. You don't want anything. So this is what I did. And I could have let it go another minute or two in the oven. And this was about 13 minutes, I think, that I did after I removed the pie weights. So you see how it's a little dark right here on the edges. But it's nice and solid. This looks beautiful. This is a good uh, color that you want. So for people like me who need to see color and see what it should look like, uh, here's your example. It could go a couple more minutes and get a little bit more brown on top, just depending what you like. If ever you feel like the top is getting a little too brown and the bottom doesn't seem to be quite done, maybe it's a bit of a thicker crust than I did, um, get some tin foil real fast and, and put a circle around 
uh, just the outside, line the outside in a little like ring of tin foil, or if you have one of those handy metal ones, and just put it over the edges, and that'll help stop the browning um, and cook the inside more. So if that happens, you know, don't freak out, don't worry, you can fix it. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is par bake this. I'm gonna put it in for 15 minutes, 425, and then at 15 minutes, I'm gonna pull this out and cook it for just a couple more minutes. Oh, which by the way, you can save your tin foil rounds so you don't have to keep wasting tin foil and save your beans and pie weights and use them every time you bake a pie. Um, so I cooked this 15 minutes, took out the, the tin foil with the, the beans in it, and I cooked it for another two minutes, sorry, three minutes. Uh, and then I'm gonna make chicken pot pie tonight, which I realized I meant to make a savory crust and this has sugar in it, but I really think it'll be fine. <laughs> But I will show you uh, the end result. But this is around what it should look like. Pale, not, not quite the other pie crust I showed you. All right, this is my chicken pot pie. Obviously, it's not quite as centered as I'd like to be, but you know, I wasn't trying incredibly hard. <laughs> but we did little cookie cutouts and then a little egg wash and we baked it for, I think it turned out to be 20 minutes. But you've got a beautiful flaky golden crust like you can see how beautiful and, and just flaky that is. It's gorgeous. Tastes really good too. So savory pie. And then I always have extra dough from the edges. So we just cut out, you know, the, the cookies and uh, put some melted butter on it and sprinkled some sugar and cinnamon and just had lovely cookies. And if all you're doing is making cookies, you don't need to sift the flour. You can just whack them together quick. All right, I cannot wait to hear how yours turned out or even better see some pictures. But thank you so much for joining me today. I am excited about this recipe. I hope that you enjoy it. Have a great day.